Hello, this is Mark Armitage from the Dinosaur Soft Tissue Research Institute and we wanted to show you video as soon as we could of a dig that we just completed in the Permian uh, in Oklahoma. We dug in the lower Permian localities in uh, near Lake Frederick. Uh, this is part of the Garber Sandstone which is well known in the literature. So we have some exciting details to present to you as we go forward here. I would first like to acknowledge our dig leaders, uh, Bill May and Julie May of the Oklahoma Museum of Natural History in Norman, Oklahoma. Also participating were uh, Mr. Joe Taylor of Crosbyton, Texas, and also Stan Lutz of Crosbyton, Texas. And of course, our president, Keith Holcomb, who's the president of distry.org. Our team did recover some very interesting bones, which we're going to show you here. Uh, we spent two days at the dig, and I think we found some interesting things that might yield soft tissue. One of the most dramatic finds that we found was this dimetrodon femur laying right on the surface on a layer of clay. So that was an exciting find, and here's how it went down. Of subsurface stuff here, Bill. What we have here is a jawbone with several teeth. Uh, the first one that Ruth is pointing to here is the incisor and it's fully erupted. The second one is an incisor that is just erupting and the third one is still in the bone, hasn't erupted yet. So but that is a jawbone of Dimetrodon on the surface. We're going to try to turn it over and see if it's got clay underneath which might result in soft tissue. Many wonderful specimens were collected in the Permian at our dig. They are now being stabilized in fixative. Subsequent to that they will be washed and then decalcified for the identification of soft tissues. Other specimens like this tooth and part of the femur will be thin sectioned for the examination of blood clots. The reason we went and dug in the Permian is because we were successful at locating and identifying bone nerves, soft nerves, from Triceratops condyle in the Cretaceous. We worked on this project for months, submitted it for publication, and it was published in Microscopy Today in March of 2021. The journal graciously awarded us the cover as well. Recently, we collected KCOPS Permian limb bone specimens from collectors in Oklahoma, and we decalcified these, and we've been finding nerves in these structures as well. For example, this is a single nerve fiber from KCOPS, and it shows the crosshatch pattern quite clearly. You can also see it in this specimen, but these arrows are pointing to lipids or fats that are still exuding from these nerves. The crosshatch pattern of the epineurium and perineurium is clearly visible, so we know that we are working with nerve materials from Permian specimens. If you would like more information about tissues that we have recovered from Permian specimens, please go to distry.org and watch our video, Tissues of the Permian. For this very reason, because we are now finding nerve fibers in Permian specimens, we realized that we had to do a deep cleaning of our laboratory to avoid any charge of contamination. Therefore, we cleaned the walls and the floors and we reconstructed the lab with no fiber generating uh, cloth or paper at all so that we can continue this work and show that we are finding nerves in Permian. I'm Ruth Terry. 
and I'm Mark Armitage. We're volunteers at the Dinosaur Soft Tissue Research Institute. We have a board that is completely made up of volunteers and we use the funds that we uh, make by our tent making business, Micro Specialist, to help pay for the work. Uh, none of us earns an income from the Dinosaur Soft Tissue Research Institute. But we started the institute and we founded it together with Keith Holcomb, who's in Texas, because this is important work that was not getting done and needs to be done. We're also having some successes, as we've shown you in this video, with the journals, Microscopy Today and other journals, and we're, we're doing good science, so we're having some really exciting successes. This is very important work, and there's a lot to be done because not very many people know about dinosaur soft tissue. Dinosaur soft tissue has profound implications for our world and for us as people. If the global flood really was real, which is what we believe soft dinosaur tissue means, then this has implications for who we are and where we might be headed as a people. And very few people know about this information. And so we need workers, we need, we need helpers who will come alongside as volunteers and help us to deliver our free books to people who don't know about dinosaur soft tissue. We give everything away for free and we just don't have enough hands to be able to do this ourselves. So we need workers to accept books and distribute them to people who are not aware of this. We also need workers who might be skilled in the ability to set up conferences and meetings in secular venues, particularly colleges and universities. So if you live in the western United States and you believe that you could help to get us into your city to speak at colleges, universities, library meetings, uh, men's groups, any kind of secular meetings that you can get us into, we will come free of charge and we will bring books and we will present our scientific findings. So if you can help us, please contact us. So please just go to dstri.org to contact us there. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.